So Samsung has launched its latest Galaxy Z Fold, the Z Fold 5 or Z Fold 5, and with Google's Pixel Fold on the market, it's got some mainstream competition at last. Now, Samsung's might be the de facto choice for a lot of buyers, but I think there's something the Pixel Fold gets really right, and a couple of areas that might just make you pick the Google phone over the Samsung. I'm Cam Bunsen from Pocket Lint, and in this review, I'm going to tell you why. Of course, it's not a perfect product, there are shortcomings, but bear with me, I'll get to those too. So first up, what's it got that Samsung doesn't? Well, most importantly, based on my time using it and having used many of the older Samsung models and having had my hands on the Z Fold 5, it's the outer screen. It almost feels a bit counterintuitive to be talking most about the outer screen on a foldable phone. That should be all about the big screen inside. But it's worthwhile discussing with this phone, if only because for years it's the outer screen on this horizontal folder market that's subject to the most complaints. Particularly in Samsung's case, that outer screen has always been something of a secondary use case scenario. It's narrow, it's long, and that means you only ever really want to use it on the odd occasion when you have to. With the Pixel Fold, it feels very much like this outer display is designed to be used. It's much wider than most and isn't too long, so it's convenient and easy to type on with two thumbs when you're replying to messages. It's a great aspect ratio for media and gaming too. It's got 120Hz refresh rate, it's bright, it's colourful, it's really a joy to use. Never really felt once that I was forced to open the phone, and so on the busier days when moving around a lot and needing to get in replies to messages and emails quickly, it enabled me to get that done without much fuss. It's a crucial consideration, I think, and perhaps not one that gets the plaudits it deserves, because the Pixel Fold spec sheet doesn't read like one trying to impress tech fans who love specs. Instead, Google's made something actually useful. The other thing it has, of course, is pixel cameras. When charging an arm and a leg, or more accurately, two arms, two legs, maybe a liver, with your kidneys thrown in for good measure, you want to ensure your phone has the best cameras around, and for the most part that is the case with the Pixel Fold. The main camera, with its 48 megapixel sensor and f-stop 1.7 aperture, is strong. It's joined by a strong ultrawide and a telephoto periscope zoom camera that goes up to five times zoom optically. It's a trio that enables a lot of versatility, especially when paired with all the usual pixel computational strengths. For the zoom in particular, that means you can actually zoom all the way to 20 times digitally, and the stabilization from both the hardware and the algorithms ensure that the resulting photo is decent. It's pretty sharp and doesn't suffer from that same oil painting smushiness that you often get when you push zooms to its limit on a smartphone. In fact, in most conditions, you'll get great results from all the main cameras on the back of the phone. With well-balanced highlights and shadows that don't overly crush colours and give off that harsh contrasty look, it evens it out and gives you colour, and an attractive picture with great natural looking depth and detail. Colours can often be quite warm and a tad artificial looking at times, but they're really attractive photo. And at night time, you get the benefit of Google's Night Sight engine, which can turn low light night shots into sharp, bright images with the same characteristics. Now, there's a clear advantage to using a folding phone in the camera department too, and that's that you can use the external display as a monitor when the phone is open. And then you can use the rear cameras to take selfies and portraits. Changing the interface can be a little bit cumbersome at times, but that bit more effort to tap the external display icon in the camera app because you get stronger camera results. You can, of course, if you want to, use the front-facing punch hole camera for convenience, or the camera built into the rather hefty bezel around the main screen inside. And that leads us quite nicely to one of the downsides of the Pixel Fold, at least when compared to Samsung's folding phone. As lovely as that internal display is, it's bright, vibrant, and colour-rich, there's a feeling that it's not really being used to its full potential, at least in the current state of software that I've been testing for the past couple of weeks. Samsung's Galaxy Z Fold for the past few years has had some great optimizations built into its large internal panel to make the most of that extra size. Whether that's the ability to have free windows on screen for multitasking or floating windows to move around, or even the taskbar at the bottom that gives you quick access to recently used apps, Samsung's pretty much out on its own in this regard, delivering a much better big screen experience than the likes of Honor, Oppo, and yes, Google too. And because of its unusual size and aspect, a lot of third-party apps load in their default candy bar phone style view, giving you an app in the middle of the screen and two big massive black bars down each side. It's weird and reminds me a little bit of when Apple first launched the iPad and had that two times zoom button to make iPhone apps bigger, but quite poorly scaled on that larger screen. Now turn the screen 90 degrees and some of those will then fill the screen once you restart the apps, but usually means the resolution is off and details start to look quite pixelated, particularly in games. It's not all bad. There are plenty of apps that are great on this full screen. Google's first party apps like Photos and Gmail and Weather are great. 
Plus, browsing the web can be a plus, giving you expansive views and the ability to browse desktop versions of websites if you want, without it looking terrible. And despite some apps not looking great in full screen view, there are plenty of third party apps that do. Netflix is fantastic on this wider screen, as is YouTube, and popular messaging apps like Telegram and WhatsApp make full use of the two sides of the phone. Microsoft apps have also been well optimized for this bigger size as well. Now, as far as performance and battery life goes, there's more than enough oomph here to keep most people happy. Like, like every other Pixel device from the past 12 months, it's got the Tensor G2 processor inside. It's a powerful chip that enables fast, smooth and fluid performance, regardless of what you're doing. It might not be quite as speedy and efficient as the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2, but I've got no complaints about it at all. It's joined by a hefty 12GB of RAM and either 256 or 512GB of storage, which is pretty generous as phones go. It all combines to give you a phone experience where you shouldn't be found wanting. Games are nice and responsive, Call of Duty and Mario Kart were tested for a good chunk of time, and they were good. Call of Duty is one game where the biggest screen actually gets made use of really well. I didn't find it got hot under load and it didn't seem overly warm unless I was hot spotting while being plugged into charge. Now battery life sadly didn't blow me away, but then again pixels aren't exactly known for fantastic battery life. I'd get through a typical day comfortably enough, but there wasn't ever sense that I could test and find out if it would last two days. It needed charging most nights, with the battery often dropping below 30% after a full day taking it off charge in the morning after about three hours of screen on time during the day. Charging speeds were a little underwhelming with wired topping out at 21 watts and wireless at seven and a half. So as I said, overnight charging is the safest bet. So what else? Well, there's design, which actually I've grown to like. When I first picked it up, I thought it was weird, a bit heavy, quite wide, but the more I got accustomed to it, the more I appreciated some of those design choices. I love the hinge design and how it feels when it opens and shuts. It feels sturdy and smooth and not loose and not too stiff either. Plus the form factor is just cool. It's not weird and long like the Z Fold, but it feels like a shape and size that fits naturally in the hand and naturally in the pocket. It is heavy though for sure, and I think that's one thing I think if there's a second generation, that's something Google might want to work on. And yes, there's a chunky bezel around the main display and it does stick out to begin with, but I found with that, it's also used to match uniformly with those hinge end joins that you see exposed on the top and the bottom of the hinge. And I think that helps with that sturdy hinge feeling. And to be honest, once I'm immersed in my content or my game, it's not something I can say I really was bothered by. Plus it gives me somewhere to rest my thumbs when holding it, or more importantly, when opening and shutting it so that I'm not putting pressure on the actual display. Now, elephant in the room time? Nope, the phone doesn't open completely flat. And that is quite weird. You get used to it, but it's not something I can say I was ever completely satisfied with. Especially when I've tried other foldable phones that do open all the way without that awkward angle. There's also that concern that some might actually force it a bit too hard in attempt to open it all the way, and in doing so, damage the hinge. Now my unit's been fine, but it's a concern. Thankfully, it's water resistant to a high level, so you can be sure your expensive smartphone won't be troubled by the odd bit of rain or being accidentally dropped in the sink. So in the end, the Pixel Fold is a great all-round foldable phone and one that certainly has its quirks and issues. But in a way, some of its quirks are actually what gives it charm. It's a similar price to the Galaxy Z Fold 5 and is in some ways less refined than Samsung's phone. So whether or not you buy it will likely come down to how much you value your cameras, the exterior screen, and clean software. If you're more about multitasking optimization from Samsung in that internal display, the Fold 5 is a better option. But if you want a phone that's quick, easy, convenient to use with a clean, bloat-free software from Pixel, and you want something a bit different, the Pixel Fold is here. It's imperfect, but I have genuinely loved using it. Let me know what you think of the Pixel Fold in the comments down below. Will you be getting this, the Z Fold 5, an older model, or no folding phone at all? You can get me on threads too. I'm at Cam Bunton, and if you did like this video, please do leave a thumbs up, subscribe, and tap that notification bell. And I'll see you again in the next one. Bye for now.